The Power BI dashboard from the First Responder Kit helps you slice and dice your SQL Server's DMV data. Once you've started logging that data to a table, when I open up Power BI, I can see over here, I can filter down what specific dates and times I want to look at, and it helps refocus everything that's inside this report. Let's say that I just want to look at what was happening this morning. Now, the place that I start here is Vital Stats. And vital Stats, there's really two main important numbers for SQL Server when I first start performance tuning. It's kind of like a car's dashboard. There's a speedometer on a car's dashboard that shows you how fast you're going. And then the tachometer shows how hard your engine is working in order to achieve that speed. You could be really flying and the engine not working very hard, or you could be trying to drag a trailer up a cliff and the engine could be working really hard, even though you're not really going that fast. That's what wait time and batch requests a second is in SQL Server. Batch requests a second is the line graph. So you can see here this morning at 8.15 uh, a.m., my SQL Server was doing about 11 miles an hour. It was satisfying about 11 batch requests per second. Things are even worse earlier in the morning. I was only doing about one batch request per second. And then all of a sudden, I started doing a whole lot more work later on in the day. As I hover up here, you started all of a sudden doing 51 batch requests a second. Well, that's kind of cool. I, I want to be able to do more queries per second. Also, you can see that these, char these bars actually went down, too. My SQL Server stopped working so hard. Odds are somebody tuned a query or added an index. We'll talk about more on troubleshooting that later. But if I want to see what my SQL server's working on, like how hard it's working, I can hover my mouse over these over these uh, bars. This is how much wait time my SQL server has piled up. For example, right now it's working really hard on CPU. Earlier in the morning we had problems with memory as well. Well, these CPU memory locks, these categories that you're going to see in SP Blitz first dashboard here. These are all from Microsoft's weight categories that came out in SQL Server 2017. I don't always agree with how they're categorizing things, but I want to stick with the labels that Microsoft uses. What you might be more used to seeing is specific weight stats. If you want to see exactly what a weight stat is, you can click on it. And when I click on it, all of a sudden it shows over here just that filtered weight category. So here I'm seeing just resource semaphore and reserved memory allocation extend, extension, whatever that is, EXT. I always think of Cadillac Escalades, the EXTs of those. You can see if I click on the CPU part, that's SOS scheduler yield. You can click around on different weight types and see what each of those weight types mean or weight categories and see what each of them mean. Now, when I click back out and away, I get back to the whole unfiltered graph. So now I can look at overall what is most of my time been spent waiting on inside here. Most of my time has been spent waiting on SOS scheduler yield weights. Now, if I want to see what's been going on at a specific time, like, whoa, what was going on during this time when this bar was really, really high? I can click on that bar and now I get de filter details down here in the rest of the dashboard. So right now, SP Blitz first tells me, yo, your CPU utilization at this time was running 95%. Well, yeah, that's, that's certainly not good. And if I scroll down further, I get SP Blitz cache will show me what were the most resource intensive queries that completed during that time around the time of 8 a.m. from the previous sample. And I can see in here which queries they were. And I usually want to know more about them, like this select top 250 star from DBO users. What's up with that? I can right click on that and drill through into query details. Now, when I drill through into query details, I'm going to go to the next tab in the Power BI dashboard. So now it's gone over to this query details tab. And it shows me more about this query hash, shows me what's been, uh, what queries have been active with that query hash. And over time, in my gathered data, I can see how many different plans I had, what the query cost was, how long it took, how much CPU time it was taking, how many times it was executed, what warnings SP Blitz Cache reported about this query. Uh, you're doing some backward scans. You have expensive sorts going on. So if I want to go start tuning those, I can run SP Blitz Cache to get more information about that specific query. 
All that's logged in more details, including the execution plans in the database. We don't show execution plans up here in Power BI yet. We don't have a good way of rendering execution plans here. So I can go back over to the overview tab and just see overall what's been going on on my SQL Server in that time. This is a really quick and easy way to get started slicing and dicing to see, well, what was going on on my SQL Server during a specific date or time range. To learn more about how this works, what data is gathered, how it's centralized, you can go over to the Instructions tab on here, and there's more links, including links to more training videos, instructions on how you set it up, and the licensing. This whole thing is licensed under the MIT license, which means it's totally open source and free. You can go take it and use it at your shops. You can include it if you're a consultant. You can use it at your clients. And there's instructions in here about how you can point the Power BI data at your own SQL Server's gathered data as well. Go give it a shot, and uh, you can download the whole thing at firstresponderkit.org. Enjoy.